Let's say it's finals week, and you're frantically trying to cram nine weeks of lectures into one night. Or maybe you're stressed out at work, and your list of tasks seems never ending. So what do you do? You have a cup of coffee, maybe an energy drink, something to give you the boost you need to stay awake. How about drinking some coffee? According to last year's coffee drinking trends, 62% of consumers have had a cup of coffee within the past day. Coffee is one of the most popular drinks consumed worldwide. Coffee is also a psychoactive drug known for its stimulating effects to suppress sleep and keep people energized throughout the day. It causes changes in the brain that affect your mood, cognition, and behavior. And because of this, it can be addictive, cause withdrawals if consumed regularly, and can also affect your health. Caffeine can be found in coffee, tea, soda, energy drinks, and surprisingly, dark chocolate, ice cream, breakfast cereals, pudding, hot cocoa, and even headache medications. This is because caffeine is naturally present in the coffee bean in products containing chocolate. Caffeine is not found on nutrition labels, so if you look here, You'll notice caffeine is not present on the nutrition facts or the ingredients. This is because it's something that is not regulated and it occurs naturally in the product. So keep in mind, consuming these products before bed may not be a good idea. According to sleep.org, it may cause restlessness and cause you to stay up all night. The process of how this works in the brain starts with these adenosine receptors and adenosine is responsible for making us feel tired and allowing us to fall asleep at night. This explains why we feel tired by the end of the day because we accumulate adenosine the longer we are awake. When we consume caffeine, it binds adenosine receptors, blocking the natural calming effect we feel with adenosine and replaces it with caffeine. This causes us to feel more awake and more energized for a longer period of time. This energized feeling is facilitated with the production of adrenaline, which triggers our fight or flight response, increasing our neural pathways, increasing our heart rate, breathing, and dilating our pupils. Dopamine is also produced. This explains why caffeine may be addictive, because it's essentially a drug that causes our brain to feel happy and want more of it. With each cup of coffee we drink, it increases the number of receptors in the brain, which causes us to build up a tolerance forcing us to drink more coffee to feel the same energizing effects as we did before. Caffeine can affect our health in several ways, such as causing withdrawals. When we have all these adenosine receptors and we stop drinking caffeine, we no longer bind caffeine and instead we bind adenosine, causing us to feel more tired, drowsy, fatigued, giving us headaches, depressed mood, and even causing irritability. Caffeine is also a diuretic so it helps get rid of the excess fluids and salts that are already in our body and can help people with high blood pressure, heart disease, or even kidney disease. So stomach issues is another way caffeine affects our health. So when we consume more caffeine, it increases the amount of acid in our stomachs, causing it to feel sour or upset. Caffeine also helps boost our metabolism. So when we drink coffee, it increases our brain activity, giving us more energy. It could also help speed up weight loss when facilitated with exercise. Caffeine also contains antioxidants and vitamins that contribute to our daily nutrient intake. So in conclusion, caffeine increases our adenosine receptors, giving us more energy, increasing our neural activity, and boosting our brain function, and can affect our health both positive ways and negative. So when you get those late night cravings and want to grab the chocolate ice cream or maybe a cup of coffee for those late night study sessions, just remember how caffeine can affect your health. If you'd like to know more information, there's a website dedicated to all things coffee called the National Coffee Association.